LNG take down a grueling game number one against Dominus Esports, but can Dominus fight back or will the former Snake Esports be able to take the 2-0? Now Raz, much like a French Revolution, that last one came down to execution. Uh, specifically like the pike execution is what we need, right? <laughs> like that was that was a straight guillotine, which is a great skill, uh, skin idea out there. We need a skin out there specifically for pike that uh, French Revolution Pike. That's right. So uh, I, I love the fact that LNG was able to get a lot of these fights later on and understand their way of coming back into the game. Because you asked that question. You're like, how the hell does LNG find a way back? They recognized team fight was a major way of coming back through it. That uh, Asura had his items, his key core items that would make it so they can front to back all the way, uh, <laughs> way back. And I think they were able to do that. I think the the trade was something that they were. I was a little bit unfortunate. Like I felt it was unfortunate between Perrin and uh, the dragon itself, Elder Dragon. But they still got the fight looking for it, and I think that that's something that would uh, they will have to look forward to in game two, the skirmishes. Yeah. Well, let's take a look back on some of those skirmishes oh, because not? a lot of those were really game changing in favor of LNG when they were able to take the five v five. This one was unfortunate from LNG. Like e they were the ones that set up the Rip Trail play. Decided Ursura didn't want to be a part of the fight, so Chang Hong picks up a great situation here. Finds himself flashing over Ursura, so he's no longer in the play. At this point, Dominus can re-control here. Wait for the next wave. That's literally right in front of you, by the way. Take the mid lane turret down, move to the next one, but they decide Rift Trail, uh, that Ryze wanted to join here, and that he wasn't going to just find the one for one. That Galio was like, all right, maybe we... <laughs> Maybe we got something here, boys. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Maybe we can find damage just waiting in the ground. So uh, it turns into a crazy, hectic fight that, you know, if you the longer you play it, the more loopy your mind goes. Uh, this was sick, though. It's always difficult to find the pick on towards a pike. But Chang Hong knew at this point, the moment that Pikes gets away, he's just going to be traded one for one for So he knew that that was going to be a possibility, and he just lets it happen. And that first fight was key for Dominus, but this one was key for LNG. This was great. The positioning of this fight with how many terrains here, take a look at how hard it is for Xiaopeng, Gala, and Mark to be in in the fight. So Kennen essentially sacrifices himself here. So Asura just cleans out house. The best part of all of this is when they knew that they had the game won. Duan says, I'm just going to stick around here and take uh, Xiaopeng's time. And they'll just end the game now that they have a wave. So the... Take away from this game, the cliff notes, as you may, is stay with the play. LNG, stick to the damn plan. If the plan is to escort the Rift Herald, play to the Rift Herald. You don't have the damage yet, baby. You just you just need to move with the Rift Herald play. Uh, team fight, pick up waves. It's all you need to do. And then if you look to the opposing side, the team that actually lost this game, by the way, uh, for Dominus, you have all the lead that was given to you. Just send Chang Hong away from you. Like... There are so many times that they've picked up victories. They found themselves deep into uh, the semifinals, I believe, actually. I think it was a, they went pretty far. It was either the quarterfinals, end of the way. They went up against TOP because they took down EDG in round one. Went into round two of the playoffs and lost simply because they were a very one-directional team. They had no other plans. And so I love the fact that Coach Bai comes into this game and says, you guys are going to learn today. And, of course, game one turns out as much as you would expect. Hopefully it's a learning opportunity for them, but there was something I was really happy about that Tell game. Tell me. And that's going to be our MVP, Flandre, on that Pike performance. Just absolutely disgusting, 8-2-7. and seven. It was all that last team fight, too. A lot of it was Flandre just pivoting for the position. He finally gets it in the last fight. They pick up the win. Kudos to Flandre on this one, who was initially struggling. But the beauty of Pike is you don't even tell the difference at the end game screen. Eight, two, and seven. Doesn't matter that there was so much gold in Kennen's pockets. It matters how you end the game. That's right. Result-based analysis, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> Flandre was able to get those results for you, Raz. And I think uh, we had, well, I had at least a little bit of concern about the uh, Keystone swap up to the Fleet Footwork. But it seemed like they weren't hurting for the lack of damage. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, regardless of, like, okay. Damage is not the primary purpose of it. Aftershock is what you go if you go in the top lane. So if you're going mid lane, then yeah, we have a whole discussion about Electrocute because it's a much safer lane, more positive lane matchups. But the top lane is a no man's land. This is where you get bruisers, the AD carries, or these AD tops like Jace more often. And so whenever you see Pike go up top lane, it's mostly in, the, in harder matchups like the Jace or Kennen that you'd see. 
so Aftershock or now you see Fleet Footwork is the go-to because you just want to keep alive. <laughs> keep alive, keep under tower as much as possible. Never take Electrocute unless if you are in a real a damning good lane. Like, I don't know how you would get yourself that kind of matchup, but... Teemo. No, that's not. That's actually just also that's a worse matchup. That's actually a hellacious. That's a matchup where you want to cry for your jungler to come top. Lane. <laughs> so you just pick the one matchup that's just the Malphite would be a good one because at least you have damage. You ha you can go electrocute. So let's say if there's a team fight that comes through later on in the game, there we go. I have electrocute guys. Hey, how you doing? But then even then, Malphite would probably go comment. This is just going on a loop war discussion around like situations where you'd pick up an electric i'm just gonna go out and say on a limb don't do it just don't just don't do it all right if you want to win just don't and also if you want to win probably don't pay, play pike top because you need to be a good pike player <laughs> <laughs> and i'm just gonna also just say that that's not something that a lot of people out there have right now not gonna flame you too much <laughs> uh, so back to the point about lng i think something they do so well with and we've seen them when they were able to accomplish that versus JDG and Invictus Gaming are the chaotic team fights that they're able to consistently output with the Vladimir Akali top lane. And now you add Pike to that, and you just now you just know what Flandre's role is. He's not even hiding that. He's just like, nah. Now I'm playing legitimately just fights, uh, team fights that are not front to back, not the uh, you know gentleman's team fight. I'm just gonna try and get your kill on a team on an AD carry, or just mess you up, and you have to kill me. I am that mosquito with knives. <laughs> <laughs> That's the mosquito you don't want to touch. He's been through some shit. <laughs> just, just putting that out there. So now we have now perfectly branded Flandre that he is now the mosquito with knives. All right. Annoying as hell. And when you try, finally go for the kill, he strikes back. That's right. You get the kill. Surprise, yellow fever. What? But <laughs> okay, you've gone too far. I thought I went far. I don't know. It's all right. But Flandre, Flandre went a little bit further than both of us, picking yeah, the okay. MVP on that one, of course. But going into this next one, do we expect to see, like, draft changes, or is it all just play better to your team comp? I personally love the draft from both ends. I think a lesson that's learned from LNG is that they will not have access to uh, the Vladimir, um, the Cannon even, because that's being picked up for uh, Chang Hong quite frequently. So I think we're going to see something different from Flandre here in particular. Um, now that they have blue side especially, Olaf is going to be a pick that we'd likely see on LNG side. Because these, these are picks that they would have wanted for game one, but were denied in game uh, one from Dominus. But now they're on blue side. They have the opportunity to hear the last ban from Dominus Gaming. We want to see what they prioritize taking away. Of course, we have four flex picks already taken out in the Aatrox, the Silas. That's going to be the fifth one, Aurelia, Rise, and the Jace. So the options... They still have some available, and it looks like LNG were pretty happy with that Nico last game. Yeah, Nico is such a popular pick right now in the LPL. I guess globally, a lot of it comes down to you can do whatever you want. It was even more flexible in the past when you can play it in the AD carry, but no AD carry wants to touch that one right now. Something killed my throat. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, uh, Flandre is very likely to pick this one up. Uh, just because he is far more willing to be that split pushing pressure. But you already saw how last game went, so yeah, who's, who's to know at this point? He's got he's got options for ass. That's true. Now, Gal is going to be pretty happy with that Sivir performance, so they're going to pick that one up for him once again. Likely to see the jungle pick, and of course the Jarvan in the fourth going to be locked in there for Xiao Peng, so he will secure that. Makes Rumble an even spicier option. We've been seeing that one globally, and a lot of that one is it's very difficult for teams to be able to get down a strong Rumble composition. Um, without the Jarvan, or without Silas going up against the Jarvan, just, you just need that Cataclysm. So, interesting that we get to see the Jarvan and opens up the top lane for Chang Hong. Now, support pick has been locked in there for LNG, gonna be able to get the Alistar for Tuan, get him some good, solid engage in the bottom lane. I and love it. Ooh. That's gonna be the Rek'Sai coming in for SOFM. I love Alistar. We saw it a little bit at MSI, and there is a reason why we only saw just a tiny bit. If you go up against Braum and Nico, your life's a living hell. You cannot pick up fights. Oftentimes you're going for one person and it's a one for one trade. So Alistair's life is suffering a lot of the times, but they are the ones that got the Nico and they're not expecting a Braum pick on the opposite side. It's going to be the Galio. 
Yeah, they're going to be picked up there from Mark. Of course, he is, that is, I'd argue, his best champion that we have seen from him so far. And he looked pretty comfortable on it last game. Save the one, perhaps over-defensive ultimate onto Twyla in the mid-game. Yeah, and I, I, at least now we're going to be seeing a very similar composition that Dominus is use, utilizing now in second phase. I wonder what we're going to be seeing in the second phase, uh, excuse me, just because at this point forward, LNG, if I think about the last game, they certainly don't want to be dealing with, you know, the cannon in particular. Just taking a look at it, cannon is still up and available. The Rise was the one that got banned out. Usually you see that as a first pick priority, but we already talked about how Nico was the, the primary pick from LNG. So I wonder, I, I think that the cannon just gets banned out by LNG. They still have the option, but looking at what Dominus has banned out so far, they want to take the Akali away from Flandre once again. I'm wondering if they're going to get the Vladimir as well. Would expect it. It's an easy ban. Uh, there's not a lot that Dominus should change. In fact, Coach Vi in the back just tell them to rerun that one. Oh, don't want to deal with the pike. That's an interesting one. That makes it so LNG can go back to what they've been the most comfortable with all year long, maybe two years long. Like the fact that when Spellbook got, you know, changed last year, that the first one to start making deal with it was Flandre. So if you give him the, Fl the, the Vladimir top line, he's going to be picking it up for himself. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident about it. We'll see if there's a change in the discussions or decisions around LNG's top line picks. Karma going to be the last band there. They're trying to take away and pinch down on the options that Twyla and Chang Hong have. It looks like they're hovering around a lot of supports here. I want to see if this Galio could be flexed towards the mid lane. I don't, I don't think so. Like, there's just been far too many damage nerfs towards the Galio. There's no way it's going mid lane. It's a pretty confident support ban. The Karma is a mid lane ban. So Karma has just been seen so frequently these days, specifically with RNG. But we've been seeing some teams dabble around with it. PLG is another example. And if you see a Sivir on the enemy team, Sivir, Galio, like the Jarvan there. So much protection that the Karma seems like something you have to be afraid of, regardless of if you've seen Twyla play it or not. Hmm. Twyla, of course, still has not gotten his pick locked in. That is very likely going over to Chang Hong once again. And LNG, on the other hand, Osra is going to be able to pick up the Kai'Sa. Let's see where the Nico is going. That's what I'm interested in. Right now, we need to see the full composition from LNG. They have a pretty good early game focus around Rek'Sai, and you would expect Nico if he's going mid lane. That's good setup around mid. So, what is going to be the top lane pick for Flandre? Well, looks like it's just going to be the Victor there, Raz. So, a lot of people, whenever they see Victor top lane, some people cringe. Some people are heartbroken if they're, you know, fans of the horse, the horse dragon in LNG. Uh, but I see it as something that's going to be really valuable in the sense that if this team can continue to play like that, that slow and drawn out game, what do you actually do if you're Dominus to start to push into these fights? But I guess they have their answer. Oh my God. It's going to be Twyla on the Zillion. Yeah. When he came in last split, we were like, okay, control mages, weird picks. That's Twyla's thing. And he's showing it once again. And we were talking about how the Karma's good ban because it's a lot of protection on Nagala. Gala doesn't need a GA anymore. He's got it in his mid laner. It's going to be fun to see Twyla back on the Zillion. Uh, we've seen it on Bjergsen, of course, in North America. That's his favorite one. <laughs> he's played it so much. In fact, he's he's become Zillion if you look at <laughs> the beard. So uh, I love him being able to pick up the Zillion and essentially be that secondary support for the Sivir. Uh, extra wave clear, too, with the double bomb. And you also have just the playmaking potential of who you end up getting it. You... Whenever you see Rek'Sai go up against Zillion, you just feel so sad for the Rek'Sai. Because it, you're a pretty straight, you know, forward-minded mindset. I'm going to walk at you, or drill underneath you, I suppose, and then I'm just going to knock you up. And guess what the Zillion has to worry about? I mean, if it's going straight at you, it's a, such an easy double bomb problem. Like, that's one of the worst uh, matchups for a Rek'Sai if he doesn't get the ganks through mid. So if Zillion gets out of mid lane scot-free, you got to worry now. Because this is a very different composition coming out from Dominus as well. No longer emphasizing on the 1-3-1, but now they've got team fight again. Yeah, they're back on team fight. They're like, all right, that lesson's too hard to learn. Let's go back to what <laughs> it's made a good us experiment, <laughs> coach. I'm sick of it. Let's go back to what pushed us far in playoffs. Give us the front to back again, and Chang Hong going to be showing up once again on the cannon there. But on the other side, LNG, they've still got the team fight potential. They've got the victor. They've got the Kaisa. They've got the Nico. It sounds like a lot of late game to me. Late game and a lot of just slow play, 
disengage. You have the Nico ultimate, the Victor W. You have to do a lot to fight into them. We'll see you as we get into game two. Point that I want to point out now. Uh, Xiao Peng has done this. I've seen Acadian do it on TSM. Um, people have just done it because it's redu reduced your trinket cooldown. So Xiao Peng must have placed an early trinket down. He went back to base and got himself now the red trinket so he can start clearing at an easier or quicker rate. So it's just a fun thing to do if you want to be able to have like the most effective use of your trinket timers. Is just essentially to be able to place that early ward down so you can see what the enemy team is going for and then come back into the map with a uh, red trinket much faster. Both bottom lanes playing a little bit cheeky there around the brushes, but looking at the early pathing, both these junglers are going to start fairly leashless there on their red buffs. SOFM, of course, has the opportunity to go towards that mid and try and poke Twyla out, but a little bit of a trade going down in the bottom lane here. Osura taking a bit of damage but should get out of that unscathed. This has been the strategy that's been used so much is, you know, if you're going for a gank, trying to get a cheap uh, a first blood, you go red, Krugs, and you have either a Thresh or an Alistar support on the bottom side of the map to make that level two early work. I want to see if that's something that SOFM wants to go for. I think it's just difficult going up against uh, Sivir. Usually Sivir's also just like rank their spell shield second, just for the safety. Uh, mechanism of it, so uh, it makes sense that SOFM would say screw that. <laughs> Going straight to Raptors and clearing up. Not going to have that opportunity in second to be rotating towards the top side of the map, but meanwhile in the top lane itself, looks like Flandre not having any problems here against Chong Hong in this matchup. As he shouldn't. I mean, the range advantage is there for Victor. That's why he picked it, is there for how easy it is for the lane matchup. He doesn't go Klepto, which I'm a bit surprised about, going towards Airy just for the extra bit of damage. And then of course, once you have your uh, upgrades on your uh, you know, passive and you're able to get your damage down, we already know what a Victor can apply for his team. And we already kind of alluded to what Nico and Victor does for his squad. So while they don't have a true tank other than, let's say, a support Alistar, they still have a lot of space created with their ultimate NWs. Xiaofeng now looking for an early gank in the mid lane. Flex is positioning fairly defensively, so I think he's just going to fill that one out. Xiaopeng forced back off towards the scuttle. I think Zillion has made it so the wave's not fully pushed in. Because, of course, Jarvan was essentially holding his hand in the lane, saying if Flex doesn't fully clear out the wave, then you're screwed. And if you do, then I'm here to get the gank off. So Zillion is now completely safe. I don't think Zerver's not interested, but I'm pretty damn sure that that's the case. Flandre going to be pushing in here. SOFM looks for the loop around, but he's not going to find it. Instead, going for the Krugs and getting spotted out by that ward. Not much the Kennen can do, though. Good timing. Whenever it comes to Krug invades, top side's the easiest because you can pin the top laner down underneath turret, and you don't have to worry about it. It's when you're trying to trade for bot side Krugs that you're having a bad time because the AD carry can still pick up the wave. It's the support that can push you out of bot side Krugs. So, if you're on the red team, like Xiao Peng in this instance, now Krugs is not up, but it's going to be up in about 20 seconds. So he can go bot side. As I already mentioned, Duan can just push him out. Twilight going to drop some vision down before he backs as well so that they know when SOFM is going to be going for the Raptors. Try and keep tabs on his pathing so they know exactly where to be careful the most. In the bottom lane, this is a lot of shove, a lot of a CS advantage here on Gala. Yeah, and Gala also just has biscuits and potion advantage. So it's going to be Asura that needs to really worry about getting poked underneath tower. Thankfully, you have the Alistar. Not only has the passive heal that he can give you and apply, but also just, you know, the target stacks that he's going to be placing down. So, Asura underneath turret seems safe. It's just that he's always going to be on the back foot, losing out in uh, CS. Come on, we look at the top lane. Well, uh -oh. mid lane first. Xiaopan might be coming in for the gank. The double bomb flashed away from Flex. Don't even need the Jarvan for that one. 
But that was just great IQ from Plex. He knew that he was going to get ganked off that. Otherwise, why would you set up the slow double bomb? That's just a lot of mana being used by Twyla that wouldn't have any, you know, that wouldn't push Plex out of lane at all. So I was like, that's a lot of resources here. That has to be a gank. Immediately flashes out. Looking up towards the top lane, Flandre's first back. He's going real aggressive with this build. Just went straight for the Sork Boots, trying to get a little bit more damage on a Chang Hong. Xiaopeng coming in for a repeat gank. He just does not want to leave Plex alone, and Plex without the flash. This is really dangerous. He needs to be careful. Oh, here we go. Slow into double bomb. He is almost certainly dead. SOFM's here. Pop Blossom will the shield save Help. him in time. Plex has a little bit of a heal. He's going to keep himself safe in the presence of SOFM. Dissuades any more damage coming in from Xiaopeng or Twyla. Yeah, SOFM coming in clutch. At that point, had to come and help, right? If, if he had been ganking so frequently, taking his flash off in the lane, is, or at least the wave is not even in his ball court, then you had to have come. SOFM recognized that, was in the area, and of course Corrupting Potion giving him the extra boost in HP made it so there is no way Xiaopeng was going to give him 100 to 0. Now Plex off of that will force Twyla back, but will probably be going for a back himself at this point. Of course the first item from Plex is going to be the same as last game, GLP is what's being worked on right now. So, so far, state of the game is pretty good here for both teams, but LNG I think are getting a little bit better here in the mid lane. Yeah, at this point, these are ganks to make it so Twyla is even up in lane. Is in a really good position. The first one where he was just hovering over the lane, we already talked about that. That's just so the wave management is tough for Plex. Because if Plex is trying to push in and he can't fully commit to the wave and auto attack it, then what can he do? He's just in a bad spot. Dominus has expected that, and here comes all in. All in from Chang Hong because he knows Xiaopeng's in the area, but not close enough to actually respond to this. And SOFM's taking the red buff at the time, so Flandre oh, no. might feel a little bit safer than he should. He's got to back out at this point. Chang Hong comes in with a flash, doesn't have the ultimate. How long can Flandre stall? Not long enough. Is Chang Hong going to pick up the first blood? SOFM just going to have the red buff. You said it perfectly. He thought he had the safetyness. Like the fact that SOFM was there, thought he had the Guardian Angel. Let's see if the. Damage is enough. Oh, oh here comes God. Plex. The observers baited us too. And now Chong Hong in a little bit of trouble under the tower. He's going to be forced away. And Plex, this should be a free kill for him and SOFM. What a great response. Plex comes in clutch there. Consistently shoved in. Understood that his wave was going to get pushed in for that. But says, okay, Blondry's going to come out. Low death timers. Just teleport mid, pick up the wave while I pick up the kills top lane. They're just going to be staying in this position for a little bit longer, but let's take a look at this gank to set that up in the first place. We already talked about the safety net that he thought that he had with Rek'Sai up top side, but he was taking out the red buff. So good roam from the Nico. We didn't catch that one out. You could tell Xiaopeng didn't either. Even went straight through the control ward. Kind of just skirted through the wall. I don't know if LNG even knew that it existed, but just in case, Plex took the safest way around. And he was rewarded for it. Now 1-0 and 1 on that Nico with SOFM picking up the Warrior Enchant off the back of that. So he's going to have a lot more power here in the early stages of the game. Duan and Oscar are going to be able to clear out that ward. Now I want to see what SOFM is going to do with the rest of this lead, where he wants to focus. Dragon is on the field. So is Xiaopeng. It really starts with Plex. He's invading too early. That's always the concern. You need Flex to have control through mid first because you're already seeing Twyla making the roam. Oh, okay. All okay, right. good tangle barbs there. Flex gonna chunk a whole lot of damage there onto Twyla. SOFM still waiting on the wings. But Flex is doing something great. Continue to shove out mid. But no reason for SOFM to already engage. He went way too far in, but he has to conquer now. This is a lot of damage coming out in an AoE. SOFM gets taken low, but not down. Pop Blossom gonna come out from Plex. Not gonna land on a Xiaopeng. The teleport comes in as well from Chang Hong. But I think this is a little bit too aggressive. He doesn't even have the flash available. So SOFM and Plex gonna make it out of there. Twyla will not. Duan's in the area just in case as well. Looking, there's a possibility of rotating towards the bottom lane. The Rek'Sai's here, but Xiaopeng's coming in as well on the Huntsman pop by Gala. Got him. Great engage there by Duan, but it's not going to be enough. Gala going to be safe after that. Mark came in clutch on that one. Really well done because Duan was gunning for Gala. He knew that he would be able to get the flash knockoff on Gala, but was interrupted in the process. Here comes Xiaopeng. Fun never ends. He's looking for the gank here. Hopefully LNG won't get baited in by this engage because they do. They're going to find a Jarvan in their face real quick. 
Doesn't look like Shaopong wants to go for it. SOFM's actually rotating down here as yep, well. Yep, you know, junglers are just, they both have the same ideas. This is why the jungle matchup is so fun to watch. Here he goes. Oh, he sees him. <laughs> Get away. It's like, I saw you on that scan. Get the hell out of here. Leave my bot lane alone. Funny enough, both junglers do not have their ultimates up because of the last fight. This is the fight that both of them use it. I was a little concerned about SOFM. He goes in immediately. While Plex is already getting the wave started up, so SOFM knew that there was danger here. Ulted, while he got stunned by Twyla, buffered it. That was perfect. Any later, he would have died. Well done from SOFM, and then, oh my god, as I say that. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, well, maybe not that play was well done by SOFM, but Plex will pick up the kill on the back end of it. Now 3-0-1 on this Nico has a 7-stack Dark Seal and a GLP 800. This is not the start Dominus wanted for their mid lane. What happened, dude? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of death. Ultimate. He must have been low in mana. I know we'll see it. Like, we'll see the replay again, and we'll miss another play because of it. But, <laughs> like, I still need to see that. Like, I don't think what SOFM did was bad, but I need the evidence. So as we, uh, you know, get all the evidence all back together and find out what actually happened in that situation, uh, we're seeing ward battles. All right, good. Nice tie there. But Flandre going to take most of his health and damage, but has the little fruit to pick him back up. Get a little vitamin C in his diet. Are we just going to let that play go? Are we not going to go back? <laughs> they learned from last game, Raz. They're just always on this, you know, the edge of their seat now. They're like, we just, we can never replay anymore. We're missing too much. All right, that's fair. I, but, can, I can agree with that. Yeah, that's what I'm going to feel comfortable with this Rift Herald take. Because look at Flandre's CS difference at this point. While Xiaopeng has been putting so much focus into the mid lane, Flandre has amassed a 30 CS lead over Chang Hong. Yeah, the matchup's great. Especially if you get your first evolution on your E. Uh, then the wave clear is there, the extra bit of damage that you have on top of Chang Hong. Especially why he has Ares, so he can bully the top of the matchup. So. It also translates very well into fights. Twyla is getting opened up on Here again. Plex, SOFM, and one. That is so much dedicated towards his mid lane. The gravity field should ideally get the kill on Twyla. There he goes. Flandre going to pick up his first kill of the game. Isolated immediately. It's hard now for Zillion. He got so much pressure from Jarvan too. So there's no excuse of, you know, I got camp. You know, I, or we don't have wars around here. You know, the usual go-to excuses for why you're behind in the game. No, he's 0 and 3 because of him just sticking his head out far too out there in the mid lane. So Plex gets the pick really early, early on. The one play that we didn't get to see, and I'm still kind of butthurt about that one. <laughs> and then, oh wait, speaking of getting your head chopped off. All right, here comes the teleport in. Nothing's going to happen. Yeah. All right. Exciting. And he, in fact, he gets the fastest route towards the Rift Herald. Now the Rift Herald is going to be secured there by LNG. All they're going to lose for this one is a single turret plating. So LNG in this early game are so unbelievably happy. Yeah, they're doing everything right right now. Uh, at this point, like the lanes are doing well, as you had pointed out to the top side of the map. And Plex is in a great position where he already has his GLP. He's just waiting to slow someone down. They know this dragon's being taken, but at this point... LNG don't feel confident taking it away on their own. They're just going to let that one go. Yeah, wanted to wait for his J4 passive strike, Smite. It's a pretty good, it's pretty good uh, execute damage. That's always something that I watch out for whenever it comes to like Baron 50-50s. It's like, all right, who has the better execute? Is there an Elise in this game? All right, that sounds good. Is there a Elise in there? Okay, that's Q uh, Smite. That works out. Jarvin, auto attack. <laughs> <laughs> auto attack Smite. Another one, of course, is Olaf's uh, E Smite. So they're just like a lot of champions are a little bit more complex, has an actual ability, but Jarvan's just like straightforward. He's uncomplicated like that. He does his best, right? He's a simple man. You would like your prince to be as simple as you are. And I just mean the common man, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I've played so much that I actually can't. I was like, my God, Rad. <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean the common man. You're just going to light me up on air. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> I'm just talking about, like, you know, you want your representative to be like everybody else. No, no you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> That's how you get bad people in power, my friends. <laughs> Well, I'm a simple man, Raz. I see turret platings. I get happy for LNG because they're up by 480 gold, 800 on their pockets versus the 320 of Dominus. 
What I would love to see, you're already seeing how low this mid lane tower actually is. Half HP at this point, LNG certainly has their eyes on it. Uh, side lanes are key. Look, you're already seeing it getting wind down. They're the type of team right now, they want the laning phase to go as long as humanly possible. The flash being used by Chang Hong. Uh, consistent, wait a minute. I wanted this to go a little longer. Yeah, I don't know about this. This isn't really extending the laning phase, guys, but LNG still feel confident about that choice. They won't, I don't think, secure the mid lane tower. Just no, one more it. auto. They got it. Come on. boy. Plex going to secure that one. Not going to land the double bomb. They get two towers for the price of one there, Raz. There we go. Top lane tower, too. Like, that's wonderful from LNG's point. Bot lane is still a huge target on its head, so... See what Flandre could do. I think he's gonna get opened up on. If he gets hit by Q. Okay. Here comes the ultimate. The flash away from Flandre. It's not gonna be enough, and he is in the side lane. One more auto should do it. Good shield coming out from him, Minion but I wave. don't know what he expects to do. Yeah, I thought he was he was hiding between the minion wave. Like you wouldn't get me. He probably didn't think about the E cooldown. <laughs> so was enough. Certainly enough. Trying to be cheeky, but got smack for it. So now he is going to die, of course, but. He's still happy with his position right now. He's got the 25 CS up still, but let's take a look at this 1v1 again. Yeah, the moment you can just glide straight through Izzy, uh, it was pretty damn easy. Even with his flash that was being used. I actually personally thought he was going to open up with a Q, but Proto Belt in to begin with. So I don't think that was something that Flandre had recognized. Proto Belt in for the ultimate, so it gets a stack off. So he flashed later than he had wanted to. He's looking for the wrong ability. Now, if we look towards the mid lane, look at the items that have stacked up there. Twyla also starting with the GLP, but doesn't have the Glacial Augment to boost that up a little bit. It's gonna be with Aerie instead, and Plex is a full item ahead, Raz. This does not feel good for Twyla. Still it is literally all of the items he needs. <laughs> <laughs> Those two items that just make it that much harder to deal with him. So, he has this mid lane pushed out. Once he gets this next wave, he can come in and completely stop what Dominus is doing. That's why Dominus, even though they got this bottom lane tower, they're on a ticking timer, recognizing that uh, Plex is going to have an ability to roam and that Zillion is going to have the mid lane co uh, completely controlled. So here comes Plex. Here comes Daddy Plex. Oh, Ghost not going to land because Xiao Peng was afraid. Plex not going to be able to find anything just yet, but he is instilling fear to the side of Dominus Esports. And at this point, he kind of should. I mean, LNG as a whole are looking incredibly strong. 18 minutes in, they've got a 3k gold lead. They've picked up two towers, and this is what they've wanted. They want a slow game. They want to get to the late game. So far, they're on track. I think we're just talking about late game. I personally like Dominus's composition a little bit more. Um, but at this stage, the mid game is so much easier for LNG to really play around because you're already seeing what's happening. Mid lane taken down. It's up to now LNG to choose what side of the jungle they want to control. So blue side jungle is something, and I mean enemy blue, so uh, right quadrant on the map is something they need to be able to take control of so they can take Ocean Dragon. Uh, and then they can cut straight through to inner tower, uh, bottom lane, outer tower, and then inner tower. So they have a pretty clear goal of what they want to accomplish because of Plex has a consistent wave clear through mid. Uh, you're always going to be on the back foot. Now Dominus going to take what freedom they have established up here in the top side of the map, and they're going to try and take down the top lane tower. So this is clean from Dominus. They're just trading. But now LNG onus is on them to make a play happen through mid. Because if we're just trading cleanly on like side to side, we still have to recognize that it's Plex that has the control. Of course, he put himself bot side. But they have control of both mid and bottom lane, so they need to do something. Either take down inner turret or try and collapse on the top lane play. They're choosing neither. So far, it just looks like SOFM just going to try and take down the Dragon, but that's not really worth it. Baron spawning in 40 seconds. Of course, this is going to be an Ocean Dragon. At the very least, they'll get it off the field, but they've lost two towers for nothing. They may be losing their top laner as well. Hero's Entrance comes in. Flandre not going to be able to solve for much longer. Juan tries to get the engage. Not going to be able to find it. And a Teleport coming in as well from the side of Dominus. Now four people in the top side make that five. Absolutely no way for LNG to even get anything off of that one. So as a whole, this is a great play from Dominus. They continue to push the pressure. Now they have pressure around Baron. Baron's not going to be up for seven seconds, uh, but they're not going to try for it because they're just, they don't have the damage necessary. But now they have so much to work around on the top side of the map, knowing that the next tower to work on is the inhibitor tower. Now LNG going to try and get a little bit of vision, try and clear it out. Oh, yeah, I thought that me. was for sure going to stop him, but not even close. 
Gets away, scot free. Plex now gonna rotate onto the side lane, get himself a little bit more farm. Flandre as well, rotating down to the bottom lane. So it looks like LNG are looking to rotate into a 1 3 1 at the moment. As they should. I think that's, uh, we should see. For me, I would love to see Flandre have more push and roams. Um, he's gonna have flash soon. So the moment he starts to enter the side lane wave, as you can already see this wave is gonna try and meet him. He can push out two waves, rotate towards his team around mid lane. Start to do that consistently. They're at a great place where I think their damage around Baron is significant right now. So they are the type of team that, hey, you know, if they have vision control around Baron, you actually have to pay respect to that. Plandre, of course, this is... What's been happening so far is kind of a problem I had with Plandre's Victor last split, which was he goes up a little bit too far, gets caught out, gets 1v1 or something, and then LNG lose pressure all the way across the map. Well, it's a push and pull situation, right? Whenever you see Victor top lane to begin with, there's a reason why the general audience despises it. It's because ownership is on the team's communication around that. That's like, that's the whole NA Jace situation, whenever it's like, well, Jace is a great pick and it's always fantastic in the meta, but, well, how do you play with the Jace? You push and rotate, and you play respectfully and disciplined. If you don't, in the situation you're talking about Flandre pushing out too far, well, the response is, you know, have him push and move with his team. Always have SOFM on that side of the map just in case. Uh, but, you know, in the past that hasn't been happening. I'm having a little bit more faith with LNG, knowing that Duan was really close to being in position. So, looking better and better. Dominus is starting to push the pressure, though. Clearing out around the Baron Pit will get rid of that as well. Tunnel gone, lots of vision available, and aggressive things coming Going in from Dominus. It. They are just so hell-bent on taking Baron's early. Teleport not available from Flandre. But all eyes are on Chang Hong, so the ghost he's catching him out is crucial. Because oh. the only reason that Dominus was on Baron was for that cannon play. Xiaopong wow. taking a lot of damage to Flash. Tangle Barb's attempt from Plex will force the Flash away from Xiaopong, if nothing else. He was just eating damage from Baron with that slow, just eking away from him, so... Uh, interesting play. I liked it from Dominus, but they're recognizing they can't play any spooky plays knowing that the Ghosties are all the way up. But here we go. Oh, the back interrupted there. Looks like they might be able to find Mark here. He goes for the hero's entrance down onto Twilight, but in the meantime, Xiaopong is going to get dropped. Has the revive for the time being. Mark going to get the taunt onto Duan. Going to stop him for the a little bit, but Xiaopong will fall down in the end. But this is big. Mark doesn't have ultimate. Your jungler is down. LNG 100% is going towards Baron, and the only thing Dominus seems to be doing is pushing out mid lane, but they're starting to move to contest now. Pop Blossom still available as well here from Plex, so if Dominus go in for an engage, they have to be so careful about the AoE damage coming out from LNG. Oh Plex no. just zoning and slowing. That is so many slows coming out from the side of LNG. And Duan goes in for a re-engage. Do they want more than just the Baron Chung Hong? Oh. A beautiful ult, but it's not going to be enough. The Pop Blossom from Plex will stop the push for the time being. But they already have lost Duan. Are they going to lose Plex as well? The damage from the bomb secures the shutdown onto the mid laner of LNG. But surprisingly, that's just two picks. Just two people. That means three people are running out right now with Baron buff enabled. So you can lose two guys. You can lose the mid lane outer turret. LNG came out big. Five-man ultimate there from Chang Hong was just not enough. And LNG, as you said, still have Baron on three, but let's take a look back at this fight. So this was a great pick on towards Galio. I was concerned that he was able to get out pretty scot-free. Eyes on Duan at the top side. He was like, just in case this fight goes on a little longer, I'm going to block Galio. And I'm going to even try and make it harder for Twilight to move past me, but great double bomb, so no way for Plex to follow up. It's okay. We got the necessary picks. Let's move on towards Baron. And then you already made a mention about the slows that came through, and Duan thought that they can pick up a fight immediately afterwards. So, at the end of the day, what ends up happening? He still bought some time. They still got the Baron buff. Now they're going to be going back onto the map with their buffs, push themselves on side lane. This was beautiful, by the way. I thought that would be enough for Dominus to come back into the fight, but they had no way of chasing them down. Plex eventually does fall to the double bomb, but three members still alive with the Baron buff with two minutes remaining on it. So LNG now have the opportunity to go for the macro play. Great time wasting though. Like, Zillion had completely shoved out basically two ways top lane. Before the play even happened, they had shoved out mid. So now it's easier to start wasting more time off of LNG's Baron buff. Going for a play on a Plex. 
Xiaofeng gonna find the Cataclysm onto Plex. Plex gonna get the zoning slows, and Duan coming in with the Hex Flash. He's looking for the engage. Teleport coming in from the side from Flandre. This could be a full on team fight. Let's see where Flandre goes. Looks like he's just gonna try and defend from a flank from Chung Hong. Yeah, great disengage. Duan came in really, really clutch for Plex. And now they're able to take the bottom lane turret, or at least try for it. Let's see if they can get it. Baron buff still remaining on those three wow. caster minions, but that was a ton of damage onto Chang Hong, yeah, nearly killing him. Definitely just ran into it, which you not know, ideal, right? Yes. Yeah, don't advise that. Don't advise it. If you're ever trying to figure out positioning into an AOE incoming, not always the best. Well, now that they have mid lane turret, or at least bot lane turret, mid lane turret's going to be the primary focus. Really close to being able to get that one. This is targeting a pick on Jarvan, but he's already going back to base, so this one is also uh, right for the picking. Twyla is just going to try and clear out the wave as best he can, but won't be able to do anything about that cannon for a little bit. That means LNG have free reign over the mid lane, should be able to take down this inner tower as well. How frustrating is this kind of game for Dominus? Like, they, sure, you look at their composition and they're saying we're getting there, like Infinity Edge is coming along there for Gala, he's farming up himself a storm, not as good as the last game what we saw from Sivir, but close enough where he's able to get to his three item spike and be comfortable in these fights alongside a zillion and Galio. But if your primary carry is actually just behind the enemy carry, when you have a double support composition, then it's just sad. You're not ready. You're not ready to take these fights and LNG has recognized that. And Flandre, despite the deaths, despite getting a little bit behind, still has an 80 CS lead and has completed his three items. He has so much there safety alongside his uh, upgradable item. He has Banshee's Veil for the magic damage, for the AP spells. He's got the Zonias to stall out for another rotation of spells. He's looking a lot safer with this item build, and we've seen the benefits it has in team fights. Yeah, we didn't get to mention it when it first came out, but the Banshee's Veil first pickup is always going to be incredibly beneficial. You saw how he died firstly. Like, that initial stack that we're starting to see from Cannon trying to get the stun in the top lane, that is no longer possible, especially with the, Zil the, the Zonias, that is. So, if he ever gets picked out, as we're seeing right now. Oh, good EQ there from Xiaofeng is going to keep him safe for the time being, but it did blow a teleport out from Dominus. There we go. Keep him nice and safe. I don't think we're going to be seeing many kills so far, but the Dominus are put in a position where they have to be the ones forcing the fight. They have the teleport available for Chang Hong, so they can always look for a flank if they decide to do so. But LNG just pushing so aggressively here onto this tower, chunking Twyla to half under the tower as the AD carry. Yeah. That's confidence. Interesting call here from Dominus to have Chang Hong not just fully push out the bottom side of the map, but try and just force some sort of gold trade. He's not going to try and go chip down this bottom lane tower knowing that Victor has base, so knowledge and recognizing that he could get collapsed. In fact, I still think they're working on it. <laughs> oh no. SOFM's he, coming in. He did exactly tunnel. what he was trying to avoid away from. All right, SOFM, can he land the Q? <laughs> the ultimate from Chang Hong, maybe a little bit too defensive too early because here comes Plex. There's the slow, the tangle barbs and the kill. Plex gonna now be 4-1-4. and four. He's got the Morel and Amicon as well in his pocket. The worst possible timing. Think of it this way. He doesn't hit the turret bottom lane because he's like, I don't want to get collapsed. Still goes for the Krugs, so like some snake, uh, LNG are like, well, we're still going to come and get you. <laughs> At the same time as Baron is now about to respawn at about 30, so we're in a tough place right now. LNG full basing, coming back onto the map, you already see mid uh, jungle and support, Alistar and Rek'Sai getting full control around this. This is the new combination we're seeing here, Duan joining the team and now working alongside SOFM to get great control. And so far, Dominus have no way for Chang Hong to flank. You look around the map, there is no vision he can teleport to and try and get a flank engage onto that Baron fight. And we've already seen how much AoE damage, how much zoning potential comes out from LNG, even when there isn't the possibility of the flank. Well, they're fully taking control of the top quadrant of the jungle. That just makes it harder for Mark to even show his face here. Uh, so I think that they shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely don't enter this side of the map. A lot of poke damage coming out from both Flandre and potentially Plex. And that's what you have to be concerned about. I mean, I'm not too concerned about the engage because I think that along, as long as the Kennen and the Zillion are there, you're not going to get engaged on. But you're certainly going to get hit by the victory. That poke is something you have to fear. And take a look at that. You see absolutely nothing. SOFM getting ready for the Baron. They know they have the vision in this quadrant. No one can sneak by. 
Chong Hong still in base, maybe waiting for a teleport. There is a flank ward over there by the river, so Dominus just need to get there in time, but the Baron already so low, just down to 2,000. Duan stalling for time, gets a good engage, the Tangle Barbs as well. This could just turn into a great fight for them. Chong Hong still looking for the flank, but now that Mark is already down, will he be able to find it? Asura, he's gonna get knocked straight into Asura. Chong Hong oh. won't survive. The double kill comes out from Flandre. The Pop Blossom by Plex will keep himself alive against Xiao Peng. Not gonna be able to find the trade onto him, but at the very least, the mid laner of LNG survives. SOFM goes down, but so does Gala. Triple kill for Flandre. Asura wants to find more. He finds Xiao Peng. Can he find Twilight at this point? Plex also chasing down the Flash, the Tangle Barbs. Flash away from Twilight keeps him safe, but no teammates left on the map. Last bit of mana to speed himself on out of there. That was a great sacrifice from SOFM to be able to assassinate Gala. Members down, and you're getting these turrets down. This is gonna be a great gauge to see how much LNG can take away from Dominus. Just the inhibitor. Just the inhibitor there, but in the top lane also picking up the inner tower there for Flandre. This was a really good fight for LNG. Specifically, Duan coming in and buying for time. You can do that when you're Alistar knowing that your ultimate can just be there and ready for you. I was wondering how they would play the cannon, because the cannon was coming in on the flank, they had all recognized that, darted straight towards him. Take him out. Knew that they had the timing to be able to do it. He didn't have Zonia's, and that's what we really needed to point, point out there. The Commander saw so is like, okay, I still have my stopwatch. I'm gonna get that kill. And Flandre able to assassinate the Sivir, so you still have damage up and available. <laughs> I don't know if that's the play. I'm thinking not, Raz. Results-based analysis, I'm gonna say, nah, not the play. Look, the problem with that one is that you've used your Flash now. As a Jarvan, your way coming back into the game, especially if you look at his items, Gargoyle is still playing at all, be that point of engage for your team, with your Flash and all, but uh, doesn't have that available now. I'm feeling bad for Gala this game, man. Yeah? Two games in a row, he has been outputting so much damage on this Sivir, doing so much, but he just hasn't had the support around him that he can actually make the team fights happen. And part of that's the team composition, but I can't help but feel bad for how well he's doing. I mean, that's always going to be state of the game, unless if it's just a pure stomp, there's always going to be one star out of all of them. Um, for me, I just love how Vaughn and SOFM have been reliably playing this series out. Black's gonna get more zone into the tower, and this is just a relentless assault here from LNG. But take a look at the fact that they don't have the top lane wave. Top lane wave is actually pushing it to the tower. So <laughs> oh boy. They know that they're all inning on mid and bot side. Dominus have to do something. They're on a timer at this point, but the only thing Dominus are gonna do is back off from the tower. Mark just as punches away. That will give LNG the opportunity to take down this tower. The inhibitor now open in the bottom lane will be picked up here by LNG. Yeah, they're gonna lose the inhibitor simply because the super minion wave is coming straight at the same time. Uh, here comes another wave at the bottom side of the map. I feel like, if you're looking at Thuan, Thuan has a splash up and available. He can be that point of engage. Expect the Alistair to go loose. Flange puts a ton of damage down onto Xiaopeng. There is the opportunity to engage still. Duan looking for it around the inhibitor. So much poke coming through. Gala was just about to get hit too. Oh my god, please stop it. <laughs> the flan like all like a lot of other people are not looking at Flandre. But Flandre just burned through his mana. Just trying to get one crucial uh, E off. He was able to get anybody off of his poke they're going in. But couldn't do it. Dominus had recognized that and focused. Well, when we consider things like dragons, especially Ocean Drake, when you have one, it's like, okay, laning phase, really great. Outside of that, maybe not so great. The nice thing about having an Ocean Drake, especially for LNG here, is if you're a poke-oriented team and you need mana on your top lane carry, the regen will help delay it a little bit longer. But Flandre, more importantly, has now hit six items. Yeah, he's got him right and prepared. At this point in time, especially the QSS there for Asura, they are ready to fight. It's not even a question. I'm a little bit concerned for Gala because Gala doesn't have cleanse. That's number one. Doesn't have his QSS. That's number two. So he's really just relying on his spell shield to get him away in these fights. But that's not even good enough to get away from an Alistar headbutt pulverized combo. So you know, usually if you think about headbutt pulverized combo coming at you, you'd use cleanse flash, QSS flash. I mean, like a lot of those to be able to get out of those knock up situations. You can't even get out of the Tangle Barb. <laughs> so, 
he has to time it well and rely on his front line. It's getting harder and harder by the minute. Yeah, and just look at the difference between Flandre and Chong Hong at this point, because that is a very significant CS lead, which to me says that LNG have been playing the map pretty well. And that's the thing. That's the beauty of top lane victory. People don't like it until it plays well. <laughs> like, that is the <laughs> definition of results-oriented analysis. Uh, it is harder to play around, and that's good you know, feedback to have, good critiques to say, we don't want to play this type of, uh, we don't want our team to play this type of style because it's just hard and we don't trust it. <laughs> say that. I would much rather hear that than we think it's a bad champion in the top lane because that's not honest. That's not real. That's BS. LNG fans though, going to be happy with this victory performance so far. They need to be able to push it in for the last bit though. And so far it feels like Dominus's wave clear is proving too much without a Baron. Yeah, they got two waves bot side. In fact, they might look for a fight right now. Uh, but they still should feel confident knowing that bottom lane wave still has two super minion waves just clashing at the same time, by the way. Someone has to deal with that, and it's at the worst timing possible. Look at Twilight, he's going away. No one's going to be there to deal with the wave. They're all ending on this Baron stop. And Dwan is just stalling for all of his life. He takes down the Baron. LNG still have it. Dwan somehow still alive during all of this. And it feels like Dominus have just thrown the game. The Nexus Tower's in danger. Teleport coming in from Flandre. No one from Dominus is able to get out. Sure, Chang Hong found Asura, but Flandre has found your Nexus Tower. He takes down one. He takes down Lich two. Bane. So much damage from the AP carries of LNG, and they'll take down Dominus Esports, two to zero. That was as good as it can get. We're just talking about setting up, preparation, proper timing. Bottom lane wave was hitting at the exact same time as that Baron buff spawn, and Dominus had no answers. <laughs> it's so much better from game number one, because a lot of times when I hear, okay, the problem with this was execution, you need to clean that up a little bit. I think that's maybe not a this series result that you can find, but LNG proved me very, very wrong, I think, in this one, because they played that incredibly well, and that last timing was beautiful. These are just very nitpicky, you know, points to hit on for teams that are trying to be remaining consistent top lane, I mean, not top lane teams, but top contenders in the LPL. And right now, this team is still undefeated. LNG have come into this split just knocking people out. Already hit both of the finalists, JDG and IG, taken down by LNG. And now they've gone up against Dominus, have started this split off 3-0. and zero. They've taken out three out of the eight playoffs teams. They've got a hit list and they're running down it right now. And so far, I'm really impressed with it, what they're able to pull out. And a lot of it is coming off the back of Flandre, but a lot more, I think, is on how they're playing as a team. And that's good. Individual talent can only take you so far. Yeah, I, I mean, whenever it comes down to our questions on LNG, right? Like, organization-wise, what have they always lacked? What do they need to do? Like, we've always gone just a, <laughs> close enough to the border of saying they need to blow it all up. Like, change everyone, do this, do that. I like, can't trust anybody, you know, just the, <laughs> the nonsense that you would hear. Uh, that I've also kind of said, I kind of said some one of those. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what we've seen here is LNG getting two crucial pickups in. Dwan and Plexen, we've hit them so much, right? And you got to see them during the game. Dwan has been completely focused in this one, being able to work alongside SOFM. And then you saw Plex just play well throughout the entire series. So there are no more questions about player quality in the mid lane and like the ability for the jungle and support to work alongside each other that I've had a few times. Uh, like since we saw uh, Jetso, the, the, the Thresh uh, master in the bottom side of the map before he retired. So like, now they have that strength. I wonder if they can be consistent with it. We're going to find out during their next series, but that's going to be later on next week. For now, that's going to wrap up that series 2-0. to zero. Next up, we have FPX versus Rogue Warriors. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.